Hey guys, how you doing? It's a beautiful day here in Northern California and today I wanted to share a wedging tip with you. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Got a Douglas fir and it is faced to go out that way. And it's actually, I uh, don't know if you can see it on the camera, there's a stump out there. So we're gonna try to keep it on uh, this side of the stump. So it's faced up and let's go ahead and take a look at the lean. I got my plumb bob on a stick here. So you can see there's a slight gap between where the plumb bob is. It starts to spread there, meaning it's, uh, I got both hands full. So it, meaning it's leaning back that way, the way I'm pointing the plumb bob. And um, only slightly, probably oh, four degrees or so, uh, well within the wedgeability range, which is uh, 10 degrees would be anything over 10 degrees. You'd probably want to consider a jack, uh, especially if it has limb weight, which this one does have limb weight going back to. So if you look up there, you see a lot of limbs on the backside. So it leads back, like I said, three or four degrees with some limb weight back. So I would say this one's going to be, it'd be the either light to medium wedger. I wouldn't say it's going to be a hard wedging tree, but um, that's not the main point I wanted to make. I just wanted to kind of show that to you guys before we get started on the back cut here. So let's go ahead and start in the back cut and I'll give you a handy tip for keeping from beating your ax handle up. It's pretty pretty simple really, but it took me a long time to figure out for some reason. All right, so let's go ahead and get the back cut partially in. plenty of wood there so it's not going to move we can go ahead and start our wedges now if you're worried about it coming back uh, you just put your back cut in first but we got lots of wood it's not a hard leaner so I wasn't worried about that there is a little bit of wind so this is kind of what I would use I used to do just take two wedges these are two 10 inch wedges uh, on a tree that I thought was maybe a medium wedger. Good to have two wedges. And I'll just start pounding them up. But we're not going to do that. And I'm going to show you why. I'm not going to use those two wedges. Because these are both 10 inch wedges. One of them's shorter. It's kind of stubbed off from cutting the tip off a bit. And one of them's newer. But... What we're going to do instead, we're going to take a 12 inch wedge and a 10 inch wedge. And we're going to put the 12 here on the far side away from me. And we'll put the 10 there. And now we start to wedge it up. But what this does is when I'm wedging on this side, my ax isn't hitting this wedge. If, if both wedges are the same size, as I'm wedging the far, as I'm just doing this right here, I'm beating the, at my ax handle up. And if you use these, stagger the size like this, you'll save your ax handles by doing that. And it does seem to really wedge real nice. Uh, of course, you could use an 8 and a 10 or whatever, but the main point being um, using two different size wedges with a basically a 2-inch gap. So this is a 12-inch wedge and a 10-inch wedge. 
I'll go ahead. Get that nice and snug. And we'll go ahead and keep cutting. And uh, we're gonna wedge it right through there. So let's get this cut up some more. about two inches there I could cut it up a little bit more but we're basically got a uh, pretty good hinge across here cut and go ahead and just wedge it on over that's wedging pretty easy really but you can see we're having to lift it a little ways for sure but that's that's going there she goes. All right. Let's see a lady in there. Okay guys, well that's the tip for the day. Just using the uh, stagger in your wedges like that. Save your axe handles out. Uh, well that's it for this video and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. God bless you.